All right, hello. Today I'm going to show you how to solve the 4x4 corner turning octahedron. This is it right here. As you can see, um, it is kind of like a 4x4 Rubik's Cube. Uh, if you look from the top, these center squares here are actually the corner squares on here. Uh, the edge squares here are actually these two edges here and the corners are these tiny little center pieces on the octahedron. So, um, you would think that solving the octahedron is quite similar to solving um, the regular 4x4 Rubik's Cube. But, if you use the same techniques uh, you use when solving a 4x4 Rubik's Cube, on this octahedron you get into trouble. You encounter parity issues um, and that is not nice to deal with. This happens because, for example, on uh, the 4x4 Rubik's Cube, these four center pieces are interchangeable. You will not notice if two of these are flipped or they are cycled in any way. But on the octahedron, um, those four squares are not interchangeable. In fact, these three center pieces, or in this puzzle, corner pieces, are interchangeable. Uh, also, the edge pieces on this puzzle have two stickers each, while the edge pieces here have one sticker, and also have interchangeability with two other pieces each. And the corner pieces, on the cube they have three colors, but on the octahedron they only have one color. Also, the octahedron actually has multiple different color schemes as solutions. As you can see, this is a solution, but after a move like this, we have another solution that is also valid, of course. As you can imagine, there are loads of different solutions. Well, on the 4x4 Rubik's Cube, the color scheme will always be the same. The only thing that can be different between solutions are these center squares. So, solving it like a 4x4 Rubik's Cube is a hassle and, in fact, makes it more difficult to solve. So, we are going to solve the 4x4 corner turning octahedron using three versions of a single algorithm. These algorithms are three cycles and a three cycle is simply an algorithm that only cycles three pieces between each other and nothing else. The three three cycles we are going to use are cycles for the th three different kinds of pieces we have on this puzzle. So. We have one for the corners, one for the edges, and one for the centers. I will use the 4x4 uh, notation for these algorithms, but they are very simple to remember, so I will only show them to you once, and then you can just look back if you need any more help with these three cycles. The notation is as follows. This we will see as the front face, so an F move rotates the front face clockwise and an F prime move will rotate counterclockwise. Then this is the right face, so this is R, this is R prime and for the slice moves I will notate them as little r and little r prime. The same goes for the left face. This is L. This is L prime. This is little l. And this is little l prime. These are all the moves we will need for these algorithms. So, firstly, for the corners. For the corners, um, the algorithm is as follows. We got F little r F prime little l prime 
F, little r prime, F prime, little l. And as you can see, this algorithm cycled these three corner pieces in counterclockwise order. Of course, this algorithm also has a mirror version. And the moves are as follows. F prime, little l prime, F, little r, F prime, little l, F, little r prime. And those cycled those pieces back to where they came from. The next three cycle is a cycle for the center pieces. This algorithm is exactly the same as the previous one, but instead of having this, those little r and little l turns, those slices, we'll just have r and l turns, just the outer layer. So the moves are f, r, f prime, l prime, f r prime, f prime, l. And as you can see, that cycled these three centers in counterclockwise order. And now for the mirror image, this will cycle the pieces in clockwise order. We have f prime, l prime, f, r, f prime. L, F, R prime. The edge cycle is just a combination of the corner cycle and the center cycle. The moves are F, little r, F prime, L prime, F, little r prime, F prime, L. As you can see, that cycled these three edges counterclockwise. Of course, there is also a mirror version of this one, which goes F prime, little l prime, F, R, F prime, little l, F, and R prime. As you can see, all these three cycles consist of turning the front face, turning the right side up, turning the front back, and then the left side up, front back again, right side down, and front back, and left side down. Or the mirror versions, they turn the front side first to the left, then the left side up, front side back, right side up, front back, left side down, and then the front back, and the right side down. The only difference is that in the corner cycle, you, you, you move the slices in the center cycle. You move the outer slice and in the edge cycle you first move the center slice and then the outer slice for the other one. It can be useful to remember that if you want to cycle pieces clockwise our first move is going to be counterclockwise. So this center cycle has cycled the yellow one to there, the blue one to there, the green one to there, so it has been a clockwise cycle. If you want to turn them back counterclockwise, we remember that our first move is going to be a clockwise one. This also is the case for the corner and edge cycles. Okay, now that you have learned these cycles, we are ready to scramble the puzzle and try to solve it again. And there we go. That looks like a nice scramble. We are first gonna start by solving the corners. So we're going to try to define each face by the color of their corners. For this we start by finding a corner, a square like this that has four different colors. Here we have one, and if one doesn't exist you can just turn around a bit and make one yourself. 
This corner has white, green, yellow and blue. Which means that we need red, orange, purple and grey to be on the other side. We already have an orange, purple and grey, so we just need a red. It is quite easy to put the uh, colors in from this middle layer onto this square here. What we do is we just take the red we want to place and find the square, the piece we want to replace. So for example, the blue one we already have on the bottom, so we don't need this one. Then we're going to turn this piece up so it's diagonally across from the piece we want to replace. Move the piece we want to replace into the slice which we just turned up and the piece we want to place away from it and then turn down again. This will bring back the pieces we just turned away, keep the grey one, we just place the red one. Sometimes you'll need a few turns to accomplish this, but using this technique is pretty easy. So now we have all eight colors defined in some face. Next we're going to work on this middle band here. We are going to do this two pieces at a time. First the left two, then the right two, and then move up. So here we need a yellow and a blue piece. I already see a yellow one here. We just turn that, but not into the correct position next to the yellow one, but in the incorrect position next to the blue one. Then what we will do is we'll just search for a blue piece. Here is one. Move the yellow piece up so it will come next to the blue piece. So we need a blue piece in the bottom right corner. Right here. Move the yellow. Then turn them both onto the left slice so they meet up and turn back. We'll do the same for the red and grey. First let's find a red or a grey piece. Here's a red one. Move up. Move it in the incorrect position first and move down again. Now let's find a grey piece. Right here. Move it up. So it connects. Move them to the side so they both fall in the right position. And move back down again. Alright, now we go to the next pair, pair of pieces. A green and yellow one. I already see a green and yellow one here. These line up nicely already. Here we have an orange and a red one. Let's find a red piece, put it in the bottom right, uh, bottom left position. Connect, turn, turn back. Now we have a white piece that is already in the correct position, so we'll just move it to the incorrect position. Connect with the green, turn, and turn back. And then we have a purple one, which we will connect to this orange one. And so we have connected the next pair of pieces. Now we have come to the last pair of pieces. You will always be able to connect at least two of the corners to the correct face on this last slice just by turning, like this. Here we have one connection, here we have zero, here we have one, and here we have two. If you've connected all four already, you're in luck. But now we, for example, have a problem. We need to switch these two centers, but we can't do that without disturbing any other centers. This is where our three cycle comes in handy. Our three cycle cycles one piece here, one piece here, and one on the back. If we put want to put the grey piece here, the purple piece is going to go to the back somewhere, and then we, uh, if we replace it with another purple piece that'll come to the front, then we have solved the, the the corners. So what we can do 
is put a purple piece here. This is the position that will join in the uh, clockwise three cycle. Now we perform the three cycle starting with a counterclockwise move because we want to move clockwise and move the slices for this one. As you can see, that has now cycled these three pieces and we turn back our setup move. This has now solved all the corners of our puzzle. At this point you are free to make any of these middle turns without disturbing anything. Next we will work on the centers. The centers are very easy to solve using three cycles. For example, we have a purple center here, which is on the orange face. We want to move it to the purple face. But this green center here, we want to move to the green face. We have a cycle that moves it like this and then down here. Let's find the green face and put it down here. This will mean that the white center is going to end up on the orange face. We want to move it counterclockwise, so we start with a clockwise move and perform the center cycle. This has now solved these two centers. The orange one wasn't, all, wasn't solved anyways, so it doesn't matter that it now has another center. Let's try to now place this white center here. There is a clockwise cycle that will bring the yellow center down here, so we just bring the yellow face over here. And now we perform the cycle starting with the counterclockwise move. This has solved two more faces. Now we have come to the last two centers. The only thing we have learned is a center 3 cycle. We do not have a center swap. This is a kind of parody which we can only fix by swapping some corners. Let's say the centers were placed like this. Then they would be easily solved using a 3 cycle. But now the corners are misplaced. But Luckily, we can swap two corners if we have a third corner of the same color. This is exactly what we are going to do. We're going to correctly place these four corners now, after which we can do the three cycle on the centers. To swap these two corners, we need a third co corner of the same color, green in this case. The orange one is going to go here, green one is going to go to the back, and this green one it's going to come to the front. This looks like a clockwise cycle. So we're going to start with a counterclockwise move. And then do the setup move. This is now swapped these two pieces. So the green one is in the correct position. Next, we're going to make the orange one go here, the yellow one go to the back, and this yellow one come into position. There we go. And now for the last swap, we are going to Put this blue one right here, the orange one is going to connect to this orange one, and then this orange one is going to go down here. And undo the last move, and now the centers, or the corners here, are correct again, 
which leaves us with a simple center swap. There, there, and there. This is a clockwise move, so we start counterclockwise. And there we go. Every face now has the corners and center of the same color. This only leaves us with the edges. The edges are solved using a simple three cycle as well, which we've learned. This yellow one goes to the blue one, and the blue one goes down here. So we find the blue face, it's here on the back, and put it into position. Now this blue piece, or this purple piece here, is going to go here. But we can also put this gray piece down here. This will make sure that the yellow piece is going to end up on the yellow face, the blue piece end up on the blue face, and the gray one end up on the gray face. This is a counterclockwise cycle, so we need to start clockwise, move the slice, and then move this to the side. And that has solved these three edges. Next, let's try to place this yellow one, or here's our yellow one already. We're gonna need another blue piece to place here. And there is no green piece on this face, so we're just gonna p place a random one there, because it's not solved anyways. Now for the last yellow piece. We're going to put it right here. So yellow is going to white. White's going to go here. Here's the white face. The white face has no gray pieces. So we're just going to perform it like this. There we go. Now the yellow face is complete. Let's continue with the green face. green one next to the place where it has to go, orange is going to go down here, and then this purple piece is going to go here. There we go. We'll just continue like this until all faces are solved. Now we've come to the last step, which is swapping these two edges. Just like in the case of the corners we needed to swap, we can just use a third piece of the same color. This gray one is going to go here, the red one is going to go here, and this piece is going to go here. So if this piece is a red one, it will fill in that hole and this red will take its place. So we can use, for example, this piece. Just move it over like this. And now we perform the cycle. As you can see, the gray face is now completed, and the two reds are in place, because after these two moves, puzzle is complete. Now, this is obviously not a speed solving method. It is uh, pretty slow, but I think it is a very fun way to solve it and very easy to memorize. It is basically only one algorithm with three variations that are very easy to remember. So, uh, I wish you the best of luck with solving this. And I'll see you next time.